Heavyweight's tough, man. Heavyweight's really tough. They should be allowed to take roids. That's my hot take. <laughs> well, I don't think uh, steroids is going to make him a better fighter or give him more, you know, IQ or make him more dynamic. Um, mm. But I... I th- oh, is that a John Jones defense out of Demetrius <laughs> Johnson there at the end? That was a really slick way of very well defending John Jones being on roids you, there. You know, you know what? <sighs> you almost said, I don't think steroids would have them beat DC in a rematch. Uh, you know what? Uh, you, my head hit. you know, we can have DC on here. And the hardest thing with the whole thing, you know, some of the guys in the Mighty Cast staff might think, you know, that PED, the PEDs, that John Jones is, you know, pop for remember, is a picogram. You know, I, I've been in mixed martial arts for 18 years. I've done so many drug tests and all my drug tests have come back clean. Never gone to gas mm-hmm. station, got dick, none of that stuff. Dick still go hard when my wife comes out of the shower. I don't need that. Um, so that's always going to be an overhead cast over John Jones. It was funny. Uh, my mm. kids are watching the fight and when they're naming all the things that John Jones has accomplished and they're like, oh, he's gotten in trouble. He's done cocaine. My son turns around and goes, John Jones does cocaine, dad? And I was like, Son, that was in the past. I don't know what he does now. But I couldn't believe yeah. the UFC said that, like, in the buildup. And my kids were like, motherfucker does cocaine, dad. And I'm like, one, yeah. I should have let you guys watch South Park. Because that's the only reason why you guys know what cocaine is. And two, mm. um, yeah, don't worry about that. But it's just interesting. I agree with you. There's no movement in the heavyweight division. And it's just hard. Because now we have to sit back. Well, we don't really have to sit back. But if John Jones truly does not want to fight Tom Aspinall... And then what what do you do? Do you say, okay, fuck it? I personally think, and I'll say this is a hot take, it isn't the best for the sport to have a goat of the sport in John Jones and then say, oh, by the way, he's also the one with the most drug testing anomalies in his career as well. Mm. Because it does, to me and to lots and lots of fans, I'm sure, I'm sure you know the difference between, I'm not saying from experience, but you would know that it's, a lot of people think roids turn you from A to B. You just be some <laughs> wimp. And then you take roids and all of a sudden you're John Jones. Like, I don't think without roids, John Jones is losing to, you know, Carlos Felipe, the regional heavyweight that got cut from the UFC. I, I don't I don't think that happens. But it is that edge that you have when it comes to recovery, when it comes to going into fights healthy, training healthy, not going into things with injuries. It is that edge that you have, especially when Jones goes on a Smith, Santos, Reyes, back to back to back within a year. It's that thing that keeps him fresh if he is on something, which he is. It's, it's tough. I don't know if he is right now, but he has been. So you can assume that he still is. But um, I just think when it's all said and done, I'd love to have a goat of the sport that you could hang your hat on like you. Like GSP. Like a guy right now that's pushing forward, like if Habib would have went on a little bit further, where you could put your, hang your hat on him and say, this guy's the GOAT with no asterisks. There's not this, he's the GOAT. Oh, and by the way, he just so happens to be the guy with the most failed PED tests in the modern UFC era. Well, first we have to figure out how many failed drug tests did John Jones have. So while while we're, mm. while I give you more of a discussion, um, the <laughs> he says, go. Um, five. we 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 can have the producer Nick, um, Nick, while we're doing this, look it up, and so we can have like a, a clear, you know, number of how many he's failed. But that is the hardest thing about this sport. Right, depending on who you ask, you know, Dana White's never going to acknowledge that stuff. He'll probably say, you know what, he went to court, they tested it, it was a picogram, et cetera, et cetera. Right? For me, for me, I think we're all athletes, and I've been tested at the liquor store from USADA. I've gone swimming, yep. and when I came up from a lap, USADA was right there. It's almost like she just had fucking deja vu. She's right there. Um, I've been tested. All around, I've never hid from a test. I've always been compliant of giving, you know, blood, urine, whatever they want. Now, John Jones does have some, uh, you know, um, unconclusive, I guess you say. Well, it is conclusive because they said it was a picogram. My first thing is like, what is that doing there? Right? I mean, there's so yeah. many athletes there that have popped. You know, I was, you know, I remember Sugar Sean O'Malley said he was grappling somebody and he tested positive for something that was inside of it. it Everybody's popped for something. I've never popped for anything, right? So for yeah. me to sit here and be like, okay, John Jones is a cheat and he's done steroids, da 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 da, I would have to be 
like I I just want to I want to be naive to say that he never did yeah. it. Same thing with TJ Doshaw. Like yeah. when he came out and pop and he says, "Yo, I took EPO." Da 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 da. I was flabbergasted. I was like, "Are you why?" Why would you, t yeah. like, you know what I mean? So, you know, Gordon Ryan, he's came out, you know, Craig Jones, they come out and say, yeah, I take steroids because everybody else is doing a jiu-jitsu, right? And then my mm. question was like, hey, Gordon Ryan, do you think you'd be just as good and be able to compete at a high level without steroids, right? He won't come on the mighty cast because I'm just going to ask him blatantly. I'm just have straight up. Same with Donna Cerrone. Donna Cerrone, he wants to come back and fight. He's been on TRT and he's been, you know, straight forward. He goes, it makes me feel fucking great. I mean, with the train again, I, I can, I recover faster. And that's what steroids does it helps you recover faster from what people are telling mm -hmm. me so only person who truly knows if they took steroids or not is john jones you know will he ever come out and say yes i've taken steroids we have no idea but you know he does have you know an asterisk on a usada test and for you if you think if somebody's gonna be considered the goat and mixed martial arts they have a have a clean record you know what what let me ask you this, Guru, because you have probably the biggest following in mixed martial arts that you built from day one. What do you mm. consider a GOAT in mixed martial arts? Like, what is it for you that gives that somebody earns that label? Uh, perfection, level of competition. I think when it comes to the greatest of all time, being great is an achievement of greatness. You know what I mean? How many great wins do you have? How many great moments do you have? That's what it comes down to. And listen, John Jones is the greatest of all time. He is. There's a lot of people that, listen, if we want to get into who's popped, Makashev has popped before. Mm. And a lot of people have him like nearing the borderline. If he picks up a few more, he's going to be in the conversation. And there's a lot of names in the sport that have popped before. Like even you said O'Malley there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not saying O'Malley's near the go conversation, but you know what I mean? There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of names that have popped for something. So I know there's uh, all of that. I, I consider John Jones the greatest of all time. You know, you achieve legacy, you achieve it against names people know are a top quality competition. Mm -hmm. I think you're in the conversation because you did it across different promotions. I think that's a huge edge for you, to be honest with you, um, especially at 1FC where I think the lighter divisions are a lot more credentialed than the heavier divisions. Oh, but, you know, well, don't get me wrong. Yeah, the heavier divisions they they almost don't have opponents in the heavier divisions. I saw Derrida speaking about that and Malakin and all of this. Um, so I I do consider an achievement of greatness. How much did you achieve? What did you do? Did you beat everyone you lost to? Who did you lose to? How good were they? Those things stick out. At GSP, he lost twice. He beat both of them. He redeemed it double. Got the double champ status. There's just how much do you one up the guy competing with you? The guy people are comparing you to. We see Nick has typed in the chat here. Um, to get back to the roids, uh, three failed <laughs> tests for PEDs, one for cocaine. Okay, he typed in the chat. Okay, well, so, well, well, cocaine isn't you know, isn't a PED, yeah. right? So we can go ahead in and some, in some places to perform, it could be. You know, I, but, uh, I, I, in, the, I, I, in the cage, maybe not. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say right now. Um, you know, when I started dabbling in THC, shout out to Via Hemp. You know, buy a hip, send me some good stuff, went, had a couple of tokes, and then next thing you know, the next day I went to the gym, did about 10 mm. to 12 rounds. I swear it made me faster. And I told my coach, yeah. like, dude, this is a PED. He goes, no, you just got a lot of rest. That's what you got. You got mm. well needed rest, which helps me recover. So in hindsight, yeah. it could be considered a PED because it gives me the opportunity to relax my body. And, yeah. you know, cocaine, maybe. I don't know what's upper. I've never done it before. So people in the chat, if you guys have done cocaine, please leave me a comment in the section below to let me know what it does for you. Um, and then what was the other two uh, Nick said? Uh, yeah, three failed tests for PD, one for cocaine, uh, PEDs. Um, with John Jones, it's just like it was the pop for Torino Bowl. I do want to mention this. It was a pop for Torino Bowl, trace amount. But there's levels of understanding of this DJ. So I get there's the <laughs> naivety of... <laughs> Maybe it was just this that popped up in his system. We've seen it with many fighters before. Yep. But when the fans, I'm speaking as a fan here, you're yep. a fighter. So you see John Jones and think that the cocaine, or not the cocaine, the PED didn't make him go to the body early against DC and then whip a head kick up out of nowhere and yeah. catch him yeah, off guard. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that. Yeah. But as a fan and speaking for the fans, what we see is who's popped for something trace amount that has just been brushed over. Yep. We see Sean O'Malley, a future superstar in the company. We see John Jones, the goat of the sport. Who's the only guy to grow a boob in the octagon? 
it's Adesanya in the modern era. <laughs> Just so happens to be the front runner and the leading star at the time. It's funny to talk, but fans notice that the only ones with these anomalies are the ones that are either just just so happen to be the best in their division, just so happen to be above the rest, or just so happen to be like a guy that they want to create into a star. Who's the guy that finds out in the sport that you can take out of the USADA window and get on roids to recover? Weidman didn't know about that when he broke his leg. McGregor did. Mm. McGregor pulls out of the testing window takes the the roids it just seems to be there's a gray area and that gray area very heavily benefits just so coincidentally the stars of the sport and the best names at fighting in the sport and when it comes to jones and his failed tests they talk about tarina bowl they talk trace amounts um the tarina bowl pulsing in his system wasn't proven to be done with tarina bowl it was proven to be done with clomid which is another failed test of john jones that he had when he tested positive for clomid um and that was something that was said oh the tarina bowl it's pulsing in his system because clomid has done it before and clomid has stuck around in people's fat cells and popped up again long after they've taken it in a trace mm. amount but jones never post te uh, tested positive pulsing for Clomid data. There was also the, the the thing that came out after the DC fight, one of the DC fights, someone might have corrected me the other day, but one of the DC fights, it came out that you had the testosterone levels in that fight of a castrated male. They were very, very low. And John, I don't think John Jones is castrated chemically. Um, so something in that DC fight must have been replacing his testosterone. So I think there's a, uh, there's a gray area, mm -hmm. but then there's a thing that the fans see and they think, ugh, we're not hearing about the pulsing picograms of, you know, who's to say a name. We're not hearing about the pulsing picograms of Carlos Diego Fajaya. Yeah. We're not hearing about the pulsing picograms of a Jim Miller. We're not hearing about the pulsing picograms of a Suma Dwerji. Maybe he has actually before. I'm not sure that that, that somehow springs into my mind. But um, we only seem to hear about these anomalies in this random thing popped up in their system. Yeah. What well, McGregor takes out the testing window. Jones pops for this three times, four times, a few other things here. Um, and then you, you see these other names. Adesanya grows a boob. You see, uh, even in lower divisions, you see Dillashaw. Who who's the bantamweight in UFC history that is the guy that has the drug problem or the the PED stain on his legacy? Just so happens to be Dillashaw who has a conversation to be the greatest bantamweight of all time. So for you, as a fighter, you understand the game differently and you go, uh, jo jo the Roids ain't making Jones fight the way he does. Mm. That's John Jones. And and I get that from a fighter perspective, but yep. the fans go, God, it's only the greats that are having these problems. There must be an edge. There must be an advantage. Is that the reason for the advantage? And that that's what the conversation is, mm. just, just to get it out there, yeah. just to get the argument out there. Yeah, so I'm going to approach it in two aspects. One, I think Israel Adesanya's, uh, his chest, the pec, I remember something was like a medical edition and he got it checked on. Um, Nick, while we're going over this, you can look that up. But let's talk about that that whole thing about the failed USADA test. For me, I'm such a black and white person where it's like, okay, you fell a fucking test. There's no reason why it should have been there. Right? Like, yeah. th there's just no reason. There's no excuse. Right? I've done many, many drug tests and not one thing has ever came up in my test. They test the A, B sample, nothing. I'm never taking anything, right? So I feel comfortable saying that. So for me, when I hear you say that, like he's had three failed drug tests, one is cocaine, I'll let that one slide. The other two, my first question is like, what the fuck's that doing in your system? That's like my my hard ass, like what is it doing in your system? And the hardest thing too is like, at one point in time, you had TRT that was, you know, people got exemptions for TRT, yeah. right? So but when, yeah. th th that's something that is, it's also... Do I don't know who was on that's TRT or whatever, right? But yeah. for me, if you're yeah. what you're saying is that if somebody who has a failed USADA drug test, they're not in a goat conversation. I should, you know, because for me, I, I understand like when you're in a training camp, you need to recover. If you can't recover, you're not gonna be able to train harder. Da 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 da. So for me, if I was to sit back and look, hey, John Jones has two failed drug tests. From what I'm saying, okay, you're done. You're not. In, you're not in a go conversation. You just you, yep. you're exempt. GSP. Let's look at your record. Clean. Everything came back clean. Boom. You're on there. Demetrius Johnson. Your record. Everything clean. Everything. No, no stain. No stain. You look at uh, Habib. Yep. 
clean. Yep. Shit, Michael Chandler, no it's clean, no stain, you know. And here's the thing too. When athletes suffer a horrific injury and they get out of the side of testing pool and then they take steroids, if they take steroids, I don't know if Conor Graves taking steroids, but you know, I just want that people come out and be honest about it. It's like, hey, dude, yeah. I broke my fucking leg. I got out of the USADA testing pool. I dropped on steroids mm. to help my injury heal faster. And now that I'm I'm off steroids, I'm getting back into the USADA testing pool to be able to compete. Why not be open about it instead of having this cloud, right? I'd rather, I'd rather athletes be straightforward that they take steroids like they do in the jiu-jitsu community instead of in mixed martial mm. arts, right? But then again, yeah. it's going to, you know, discredit everything they have been able to accomplish or they've yeah. done. So for me, how I am, it's like, you you failed a test doc, nah, you, you, you don't get it, you, you're out of it, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's just so hard because I don't want to take away the greatness that John Jones has done. I know. Right? I you know, know what I mean? That's that's the hardest thing. It's like, man, you yeah. you failed a drug test. It was a peel gram. It shouldn't have been in your system to begin with, dog. Yeah. That's how I, that's yeah. how I feel. I but it, it's a hard it's a hard conversation to have. It's a very hard concept to have because, you know, you saw it said, oh, it's good. He passed, da 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 da. Um, mm. You know, even Sugar Sean O'Malley, like even him, I love him to death. And he he, he said, oh. do I look like a guy who takes steroids? Like, no, you don't. You're not, boom, shred it. But it was in your system. Why was it in your system? That's the yeah, why, and that's that's why I love USADA. USADA is fucking king dingling because they will come for yeah. you wherever you're at, and they will collect that sample. You can hide, you can run, but they don't get that urine and they're going to get that blood. Yeah, they're going to make it happen. But on that point, I get exactly what you mean. But maybe we're entering a new era where fans are just, we've, I think fans that came up, I was before the USADA era, but there's a lot of fans now, especially that watch my stuff, that are joined during USADA. So they're mm. on the expect, you're, you're an OG fan of the sport. You've been around yep. for so long. You've seen the Wild West of, oh, yeah. I know this guy's blasting all kinds of chemistry. This guy's a walking chemistry experiment yeah. Yeah. going into the cage right now. So you know that era. Oh, Whereas yeah. the fans that are watching my content and the fans of my, just after my generation of fans, they're of the USADA era where they have an expectation that everyone is natural and everyone is clean. And... Um, I think that's like a new expectation moving forward. So I just think we have a new, we have enough proven or no stain on a legacy people like you, mm -hmm. GSP, Khabib. We have other guys moving up right now that are pushing towards high legacy status right now where they mm -hmm. don't really have a stain on their legacy, where people are kind of like, do we need to have the argument of everyone's on it? So just because this guy had this or not because everyone's on it, but. You know, I, I, a lot of people have, have tested positive. So just because this guy, this doesn't mean he has to be out of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think, you know, prior to the, when it was the Wild Wild West, a lot of those guys who were over in Pride in Japan, they were on the sauce. Yeah. Right. Like I never yeah. forget one of my coaches, Brad Curtin, he was over there and he saw Marissa Shogun Hu and he goes, holy fuck. He was yeah. massive. And then they come over to the UFC. They don't even look like, look at Alistair Overeem. That's another mm. prime example. Somebody who yep. was small. I mean, when you're 18, 21 years old, you're, you're almost at that peak performance of, of what you're going to be able to develop, right? And if yeah. you look at Alistair yeah. Overeem, 23, 25, and then he blows up fucking massive, all this. There's no way you could put that amount of muscle on your body in a short amount yeah. of time while doing high-level cardio. There's just no... There's, he no way. And he yeah, said he ate horse. Possible. Yeah, it's not possible. He said he ate horse meat on one of his interviews. And then now. I don't know what those horses were on, <laughs> but they, they were on some kind of HGH, it seems like. I don't know. Yeah. And then now you look at Alex Wolverine. He's way more leaner. He looks more yeah. what his body is, you know, his natural uh, muscle capacity of his genetics would be, essentially, right? Yeah. That what is he a, used to look like. What he used to look like. That is a People prime. forget that about Alistair Overeem. Yeah. He used to be a very lean, slender, lanky kid for a, for a kickbox, even when he was fighting these big names like uh, Chuck Liddell, you know? Yes. He was like a lean, you know, Liddell was like pushing him around mm -hmm. as like the, the smaller guy and, and and then he sort of inflated into this thing. But I, I, get, I get what you're saying there because... When you said Overeem and talk about roids, I think immediately, oh yeah, look at that Lesnar fight. Oh my God. Because what, what the narrative is, is of course Overeem was on something, but look at the guys he was fighting. Yeah. Even then you brought up Shogun and then I was talking just about Jones testing positive and I'm like, well, you know, Jones had this 
these few little blimps in his career, but we know Shogun was on something. So are we going to hold Jones too accountable knowing that these pride guys have been on things before? So I, I don't know. I just think there's a different mindset of fans that have come up in the era where they have an expectation that yep. people are natural and they have an expectation that there should be no blimp on their legacy. That, that, that's, all, that's all it is. There's a new movement and I think it's good for the sport. I think it's very good for the sport. Oh yeah. Um, where it's, it's not, ah, that's just how it is. That, that is a mindset mm. that there has been. And I think the new movement is, that's not how it is. It can't be how it is. But when, when it comes to Lesnar, I mean, you, you said USADA don't tolerate things. There is a, he did test positive for his test before the Mark Hunt fight. Allegedly. Allegedly he did. Yeah. So it is, what, it gets interesting. What's, that, that's, that's what fans, that's what fans are kind of yeah. up in arms about. Gotcha. The names we're mentioning, Lesnar, huge superstar, saved the UFC, heavyweight champ, became a huge name for them. John Jones just so happens to be the greatest of all time. O'Malley, McGregor finds out about the way you can dip out of the window. So it was, we're smart people, it, it, Demetrius. So, so, we're onto it. We're so, detectives over here. So what I what I'm trying to what I feel like you're putting down that the UFC is helping the fighters, you know, kind of navigate this uh career. I guess you could say where it's like, hey, here's a little bit of this. Go ahead, do what you got to do. We'll make sure you get out nice and clean. Is is that what I'm getting? Is that what I, I I'm hearing from you, Guru? Seeing as I'm a huge target for the UFC <laughs> because. <laughs> I've I've found out recently that they all know who I am and they're not fond of me. All I'm going to say is <sighs> fighters that no one care, cares about and aren't moving on towards potential GOAT status don't seem to test positive for things and don't seem to have these anomalies that can all be figured out within six months. Let's just get the show on the road type thing. <laughs> uh, that's all I'll say. I need to be careful. Well, uh, there you go. Look, Nick has been correcting me the whole time about yeah. the testosterone in the DC fight and the Izzy guy I know as he said it was smoking weed. Interesting. Uh, Nate Diaz would have two double D cups if it was about smoking <laughs> weed. Um, before, and then even here, before his Mark Hunt at UFC 200, Lesnar failed two drug tests conducted by USADA. Oh, God. It, it just gets interesting. <laughs> I'm just reading stuff, UFC lawsuit people. Just reading stuff. You know what? I will say this. I will go on record and say that there's a, I will say maybe, I feel comfortable saying 95% of the athletes who fight in mixed martial arts in the UFC are pretty much clean. Like there's there's athletes mm. that like Max Holloway clean, Ilya Deporia yep. clean, Charles Lever clean, Michael Chandler clean. Like I can name a whole bunch of guys who've been able to produce a lot of you know passing drug samples, right? And then you do have those clouds where it's like, hey, ah, oh, ah, oh, he's out of use side. Oh, now nah, he's out of the testing pool. Mm. Now he's 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 oh my god, catastrophic injury. He's back way faster than before. Once yeah. again, I can't speak upon those people. They need to come out and they lay their head on the pillow every single night with a big count feeling good, whatever it may be. They're the only ones you can come out and say, hey, yes, I did. I did do drugs. I needed to. I need to get to a point. I feel comfortable saying I have never taken drugs. Every single thing I've done in the gym, tests I've given, I, feel, I Shit, I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited when Usada shows up. I offer him dinner. I, I, I yeah. try to cook dinner for her and, and, and give her what she needs. But I cannot speak on that. And then when you say the new er usher of era of the fans, they never came in at yeah. the beginning of the uh, of the Wild Wild West. They're like, Kate, yeah. everybody should be clean. But guys, what you know, you know, people. No, people weren't clean. People weren't <laughs> clean. People were not clean. They really weren't. Um, but I, 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 we'll, we'll put this topic to rest, I guess, yeah. because we, we, we're we getting on. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I think this narrative from the new Usher of fans benefits you, DJ. We we believe you. We believe you for sure. We we believe that GSP was clean. There is some things about GSP that, mm, you know, this and that. But on mass, it does benefit fighters like you. You're still in the GOAT conversation to us. Um, but there's, there's, there's just a new mindset coming along um, in the sport, which I think is good overall. But obviously, it's going to clash with the original mindset of the sport that's just how it is i need to be careful how i speak on all this because since the nina drama beef uh oh. i uh i don't know I'm, i've become aware that the ufc is aware of me now if you guys enjoyed that clip and you want to check out the whole video click right here and if you guys want to see other clips from this channel click right here enjoy <laughs>